Once upon a time, there lived a little girl named Dorothy. Dorothy lived in a farmhouse with her auntie and uncle, M and Henry. On that day, Dorothy didn't even want to play with her dog. It was as if she felt something bad was going to happen. A hurricane is coming our way. We must hide in the basement. And so Auntie M yelled out, Come here this instant, Dorothy. Toto, come here. We must go down to the basement. Dorothy had to go under the bed to get her dog. Right at that moment, the farmhouse began to shake severely. Then the farmhouse began to spin around in its spot. The little girl was trying to hold on to something and at the same time she was trying to catch her dog. And she was about to fly out of the door. She managed to catch her dog. She wasn't able to see nothing, just the skies and clouds. Right at that moment she knew she was way up into the sky. The house and her head were spinning so fast that she was so sleepy, she was numb to all that was happening around her. And so she fell asleep. Dorothy woke up with a big bang. The bed jumped up so high that it made the little girl fall out of the bed and onto the ground. She then realised that the farmhouse wasn't turning anymore. The sun was shining through the window, which made her realise she was on land. She ran outside. She couldn't believe the scenery. Her jaw dropped. There were fields of flowers as far as the eye could see. Then suddenly, Dorothy saw little men running towards her. The men had cone-shaped hats and the little bells on top of their hats were ringing. Also, their uniforms were blue and they all had very long beards. When the little men came next to Dorothy, there appeared a tiny lady with a white dress. The mightiest magician, welcome! I'm the good-hearted witch of the north and these are my friends the dwarfs. I want to thank you for getting rid of the Wicked Witch of the East and saving us. Um, thank you, but you must have confused me with somebody else. The good-hearted witch from the north marked a spot for Dorothy on the farmhouse. On the ground were a pair of shiny silver-shoed legs. Dorothy realised that the farmhouse landed on the Wicked Witch. Um. I didn't mean to do it. It really wasn't my fault. Uh, what will I do now? Only thing you can do is just accept the silver magic shoes of the Wicked Witch as a gift. Dorothy took her old shoes off and wore the new ones. Will you help me return back home? There's only one person who can help you and that is the Wizard of Oz. By following the Yellow Brick Road, you will arrive at Emerald City, and once you arrive, you will have to get permission to go up and see the Wizard of Oz. Straight after talking to Dorothy, the good-hearted witch disappeared. The dwarfs sent Dorothy off and went on their way. After some time had passed away, the little girl and her dog needed to rest, so they stopped by a cornfield. In the middle of the field, Dorothy noticed a scarecrow. With great curiosity, she went next to him. Hi, who are you? At first, Dorothy was shocked, but then began explaining all that had happened. I don't know anything. My head is full of hay. I wonder if I come to Emerald City with you, do you think the Wizard of Oz would give me a brain? Dorothy took the scarecrow down from its frame and together they began to walk on the yellow brick road. A few hours later, as they passed through the forest and amongst the trees, they saw something shining. Once they had arrived next to it, they realised it was a man made out of tin. The tin man was standing still. Please help me. Because I have rusted, I have not been able to make a simple move for a very long time. How can we help you? 
Over there, you can find my shack. Please go over there and get my oil tin and rub it on my joints. Dorothy did as the tin man told her to do. She poured oil on all his joints and he began to move again. Thank you so much. And what are you guys doing here? Dorothy began to explain what had happened all over again. Do you think you could give me a heart? And so the tin man followed them. The forest began to get dark. And suddenly they heard a horrific roar. And out jumped out a lion in front of them. But when Toto began to bark, the lion took a step back in fear and began to shiver. How can a big lion like you be afraid of such a small dog? I know, I'm a coward. Even the slightest noise can scare me. <laughs> Wait, don't cry. Tell you what, we're looking for the Wizard of Oz. We all will ask for something from him. Maybe he can give you courage. The lion wiped away his tears and joyfully agreed to go to Emerald City with them. They walked for a while. The scarecrow showed them the sky shining green. The Emerald City wasn't so far now. Soon later, after a couple of hours of walking, they had reached the gates of the Emerald City. We have come here to see the Wizard of Oz. To enter the castle, they had to wear giant glasses because they could be blinded by the Emerald City's shiny green lights. The houses, streets, even the clothes of the people were all green in the Emerald City. Everywhere was shimmering. Finally, they had reached the castle. To see the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy was the first one to enter. The little girl entered hesitating, and she saw a big head hanging from the ceiling above the throne. I am the mighty and scary Oz. And who are you? Why did you want to see me? And where did you find those silver shoes? My name is Dorothy. I have come to ask for help. Dorothy told everything that had happened to mighty Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz said that he would help her, but in return, she had to get rid of the Wicked Witch of the West. With great frustration, Dorothy returned to her friends crying, and she told them what the Wizard of Oz had asked of her. They all decided to find the Wicked Witch of the West and get rid of her. The next morning, they left the Emerald City and started their journey to the castle of the Wicked Witch of the West. The Wicked Witch of the West had only one eye, but she could see really far. When she saw that Dorothy and her friends were approaching her castle, she called out her giant bees. Dorothy and her friends saw the bees flying towards them. They did not have time to run away. Scarecrow, cover Dorothy, Toto and the lion with your hay so that the bees cannot sting them. When the scarecrow covered the others with his hay, the bees all tried to sting the tin man. But of course, all lost their stingers and one by one they fell on the ground. This time, the witch sent her flying monkeys to hunt Dorothy and her friends. And so, the flying monkeys attacked Dorothy and her friends. One of them caught the scarecrow and threw him on a tree. Another one threw the tin man over a cliff. They also tied up the lion to bring to the witch. Afterwards, all the flying monkeys turned to Dorothy. But once they saw the silver shoes on her feet, they did not want to hurt her. They just took her to the castle. When the Wicked Witch of the West saw the silver shoes on Dorothy's feet, she got really scared. But she also realised that Dorothy was not aware of the power of her shoes. Give those shoes!
news to me. No, I won't. I said give it! The witch made a move towards Dorothy. screamed, the witch melted away. Only her clothes remained on the floor. Dorothy first saved the lion from the cage he was kept. Then they together found Scarecrow and the Tin Man. They went back to the Emerald City, told them that they got rid of the evil wicked witch of the West and wanted to see the Wizard of Oz. The mighty Wizard of Oz welcomed them all together this time. When they entered the throne room, they heard the deafening loud sound. I am the mighty Wizard of Oz. Why are you looking for me? Toto got so scared that he ran over the big separating screen in the corner. Behind the screen appeared a tiny, bold, old man. He was holding something resembling a horn in his hands. And who might you be? Uh... I'm the mighty Wizard of Oz. Are you the Wizard of Oz? But how can that be? The old man decided to explain his story. In reality, he was working in a circus. He used to make shows with the hot air balloon. One day, when a strong wind blew him to this castle, the people of the Emerald City thought that he was the wizard coming from the skies. And they asked him to rule the city. And so, he agreed. And what about all your promises? The wizard told the tin man that he could give him a heart this instant. He reached behind and took out a stuffed heart toy from the chest. The tin man felt much better. Then he returned to the scarecrow. He opened the stitches on his head and put in a handful of wheat and sewed it back up again. It was the scary lion's turn. He poured some potion from a gold bottle in a bowl and asked the lion to drink this potion of courage. The lion drank the potion. Suddenly, he left this weak, scared look and roared like the big, mighty lion he was. The Wizard of Oz smiled at them. He hadn't actually given them anything. All the things they had asked him, they had already had inside of them, but they did not know how to use it. Now it's your turn, Dorothy. You actually had everything you wished for right there with you all this time. If you tap your silver shoes to each other for three times, you will go wherever you wish for. So I could actually go home whenever I wanted? Yeah, but then I would be stuck on that field forever. And I was going to rust all by myself. And I would never become a courageous lion. Dorothy tightly hugged her friends. She said her farewells to each of them. Then she held Toto, and tapping her shoes three times, she said she wanted to go home next to her uncle and her aunt. After a short while, she found herself sitting in the garden. Excited, she looked around. She saw her uncle and her aunt running towards her. She laughed with joy. <laughs> Toto, look! We are home! <laughs>